How many employees should a food truck have? Can you finance a food truck? So welcome to Food Truck Freaks. It is Dave DeRiberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online. This is our brand new YouTube channel, Food Truck Freaks. We are definitely all about the food truck industry. And these are two questions that we actually had asked on our other channel, on Marketing Food Online. So I wanted to do a podcast, and we'll definitely upload this onto our YouTube channel as well, but a podcast to address these particular questions. And it might be a bit challenging at first when you start a food truck business, because you may not know how much you need as far as employees or additional help. So I'm going to go through a few things you need to think about when you actually hire employees and bring them on board for your food truck business, because you may not necessarily need as many as you think, depending on a several factors. And also the second question about can you finance a food truck? Yes, you definitely can, but there are some other things you need to have in place before you even approach a bank or any lending institution in regards to financing a food truck. So let's dive into the first question. How many employees should a food truck have? So now the first question you need to ask yourself is what type of food are you making? The actual process to prepare food varies by uh, greatly actually by either desserts or certain meals or if it's a single grab and go product or if it's a item that could be just handheld and eat, eaten or is it an entire meal? Your menu will dictate how many people you need on the food truck, number one, because the amount of labor, amount of time it takes to put together the actual product, uh, there's actually, for instance, there's some food trucks that serve loaded french fries. So it's basically one fryer, you've got fries cooking it, and then you've got a variety of toppings, and your customer basically picks out what toppings they want, you throw it on there, and you serve it to the customer. Then you've got some items that are more intricate, like gourmet burgers or gourmet tacos, where you've got a multitude of proteins to choose from. You have a variety of toppings to go onto it, and then different ways to serve it. Soft taco, hard tacos, maybe even burritos, maybe even a variety of both together. So depending on how intricate your menu is to put together, and that's going to dictate how many people you need to be on your food truck. The more involved your menu is for you to actually prepare the food, well, the more people that you're gonna to have to have. So keeping a food truck menu very simple, the type of food that you're making very simple, and the quickness to make and produce that product, the time it takes to actually cook it and not only just put it together, but the cooking process too, you need to think about as well. Now, the other factor to think in mind too is once you figure out your menu situation and you know roughly how many people you'll need, you need to understand the event that you're going to be at. You need to know whether or not that event is actually going to need to have a variety of additional help because of so many people. If you have a large event that has 20, 30, 40,000 people over a weekend, there's a good likelihood you're probably gonna need two or three or even more people on the food truck aside from yourself. Now, some food trucks can withstand that based on the actual size of the food truck itself, and some cannot. So keep that in mind as well, the actual size of your food truck too. But let's get back to the size of the event. So if this is an event that you're going to that you've never been to before, you might want to kind of ask a few questions on the director of the event, who's ever in charge of the event that you're gonna be attending, and find out roughly how many people do come to this event. And then from there, figure out also how many other food trucks because if the food trucks, uh, if you've got a loaded amount of food trucks, 10, 15 food trucks or more, there might be a good likelihood that the competition is going to be very, very high and you may not do as much business as you think. If you've got a very large amount of people coming to a festival or a music festival or an art festival, whatever it may be, and you only have a couple of different food trucks and you are one of them, well, there's a good likelihood that your business is going to be much more than it would be if you've got a lot more competition. So verify how many people will actually be at the event when you start catering or if you start going to an event that's local, okay? Next up, the peak hours. Now, what I mean by this is that there are some events that may have a tremendous amount of people, but they all don't necessarily go to the event at the same time. So some festivals, some farmer's market, even if you go to a farmer's market and you park your food truck and you're allowed to do that, there might be what's known as peak hours. Those are the hours when they have the majority of their customers, or if you're at an event, the majority of attendees who are gonna be there. So if you can be there during those peak hours, you may also need to have an amount of employees, certain amount of employees at those peak hours. And the rest of the day, you can either send your staff home or maybe you just need them for two or three hours in the middle of the day when that event is at its peak. So you have enough people to actually help you get the event up and running. So take that into consideration as well. And you can even ask again, you can ask the people who are putting the actual event on and say, hey, look, what time of the day does this actually peak out? Like when did you guys last year? When did you have the most people here? If it's like a 12 to two o'clock window, well then you know what? That's when you need to have more employees on your food truck to accommodate that type of business because you don't wanna be understaffed to the point where you don't have enough help and you actually miss out on sales just because you didn't plan properly. So next up, can you finance a food truck? Of course, you can finance a food truck, but 
make sure that number one, more than anything, if you approach any lending institution or any of those companies, you need to have a business plan. You need to have a laid out structure of what your food truck is, where it's going to be, what your menu is, what, what actually separate, separates and differentiates your food truck from somebody else, and why should a bank actually give you any money to start a, a food truck from the scratch? So you want to make sure that you've got a business plan that spells out all of that, including even also the owners. If you're going into a partnership with somebody with your food truck business, you want to make sure that you spell out who is this partner or who are these partners? What do they own? What impact are they going to have on the daily operations? Are they just somebody who is partnerships as far as just getting their name on paper and they're not going to be hands on? Make sure all of these things are spelled out in a business plan because a lending institution will not give you any money if you go to them and just simply say, hey, I'd like to start a food truck. Where's the application? They're going to tell you to uh, basically leave the bank, come back with a business plan because they're not going to help you. Trust me. Next up, personal credit. Now, your credit score will actually come into play with this because a lot of banks who go, go forward and move forward with any type of lending of any kind not only check for a business credit history, if you have that, but a personal credit history is what they're going to base the majority of their decision on. If, you're, if your credit is in the toilet and it's not in a really good shape, guess what? You need to spend about a six to eight months to a year getting it into shape before you even apply for a loan. Because a lot of that payment repayment history based on your personal credit history is what the banks will take into consideration. And if you go to get a loan for a food truck, I know for sure you're not going to go in there for any less than 100 grand or more because nobody can start a reasonable food truck for anything less than that unless it's something that they actually build from scratch. But all in all, you're going to need roughly about $100,000 to get any food truck up and running if you want to do it right and do it on any level of professional professionalism. So you want to make sure that you've got your personal credit in line before you actually approach any other bank. Next up was what I had just mentioned a little bit ago, business credit. So if you have any business credit or maybe you have a different type of food business, maybe you have a restaurant and you've got great business credit and you've got other, but you just want to branch out and you want to get a loan to start a food truck for your restaurant, that's great. So you want to tap into your good business credit. If it's credit cards, if it's other loans or loan history, make sure that you have that access uh, easily accessible for your bank or leading institution to take a look at, okay? Because if you don't have a really great personal credit history, but you run your business really well and you've got a mediocre or really good uh, history with your business, that is going to be something that may be sufficient enough for you to get a loan for your food truck. Now, this last option is something that a lot of, of newbies in the food truck industry are not aware of, but you can actually lease or even rent to own a food truck. There are companies that will allow you to sign agreements where you make monthly payments, very similar to like a car in a sense, but you either make monthly or bi-monthly payments on a food truck. You can utilize the food truck and use it in the meantime to generate a business, kind of get a feel for the business itself too if you've never run one, but you actually are renting it or leasing it to own it. So these are options that are definitely on the table so you don't necessarily have to go to a bank and get a lump sum of money and say, hey, look, I just, I'm looking to get a food truck and a business up and running. I need about 100 to 125,000. This is something that you can invest a lot less. Also, you're renting a food truck that may potentially actually have all of the equipment that you need already, so you're not having to build out the food truck, which is another expense. So not having to build out a food truck, buying or leasing or renting something to buy it might be a better option than actually getting a loan. So those are two great questions from you guys. Thank you so much. And definitely here on Food Truck Freaks, there's a brand new YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you've got questions about starting any type of food truck business, let us know down below. We've got a couple of hundred videos in line for the brand new channel. Everything from getting a food truck wrap to getting food truck insurance, where to park your vehicle and everything else in between. So I will see you guys on our next video.